another video and this one we'll be talking about what you can do with a civil engineering degree. So with that, let's get started. I just want to start off by saying that there will always be a need for civil engineers, especially in this day and age where our infrastructure really needs to be better. And at this moment in time, there's going to be this huge infrastructure bill that is trying to get passed. And if that infrastructure bill gets passed, it will open up so many jobs for civil engineers, or just engineers in general, because there's just going to be a lot of building up our infrastructure and making it better. So Sorry to interrupt, but the infrastructure bill did get passed. And in that package, there is going to be $1.2 trillion that will be going towards our infrastructure. And hopefully that money gets allocated to projects that have to be done. And yeah, hopefully we just use that money wisely. But yeah, back to the video now. <laughs> so with that being said, our infrastructure grade right now is a C minus. So where does that grade come from? So ASCE does this infrastructure report card every four years or so, kind of looking over our infrastructure from our schools, roads, bridges, aviation, ports, everything in the civilization to function. And so that grade in 2017 was like a D plus, but in 2021, it is a C minus. If you wanna go over and just like look over that report card, I'll leave it in the description. The graphics are very pleasing to look at. It's a very easy read. They kind of make it visually pleasing with the colors and graphics. So it's not like a little boring textbook. It's really interesting, you get to see how our infrastructure is doing and what is needed to make it better and kind of renovate it, revamp it, and build areas even more. So yeah. So with civil engineering, there's like five concentrations you can go into and they are transportation, geotechnical, hydrological, structural, and surveying. So I'm going to be going over each concentration in depth so you have an idea what each one does so first up is transportation transportation encompasses designing roads and bridges traffic flow how to move people goods and services faster because living in a capitalist society like america the more you move people goods and services the more money the country makes and so that is why they're trying to build better roads move traffic faster and trying to not let people just sit in their cars in traffic and so something else that's under the transportation umbrella is like pavement design dealing with asphalt and mixtures to make these roads so they last longer and they're built stronger so they can last a longer time instead of cracking and i know as i say engineers just worry about cracking pavement but I would say it's more under the transportation side for sure. Also under transportation, there's that unknown future of automated vehicles because that's gonna be kind of wild and transportation engineers have to figure out how they will build a transportation system that considers that. Transportation also encompasses our public transportation system, our subways, railroad, all of that too. Next up is geotechnical engineering that encompasses soil strengths, soil samples, foundations, especially in Louisiana, you have to consider deep foundations because our soil is weak. It is so weak, but in other parts, you can have shallow foundations. And so with geotechnical engineering, they will be part of every single project because these buildings these structures these roads are built on the ground and so to know what's in the ground you gotta look at it determine its strengths determine its properties so you can really consider like settlement if you put something on the ground is it gonna be stable enough so the way i kind of look at geotechnical engineering is like 
cake baking. So say your cake is your ground, right? If you decide to put like a, like a cake topper, right? And if that cake topper is really heavy and there's nothing supporting it in the cake, what's going to happen? That topper will just begin to slowly sink, right? So in geotechnical engineering, you gotta consider what do we need to put in to support that structure or that building or anything like that. And some projects that geotechnical engineers work on that are just specific to geotechnical engineering may be levees, especially in Louisiana, or some concentrations you can go with geotechnical engineering is coastal geotechnics, dealing with soils near the coast and levees and all of that. Next up is hydrological engineering. This considers stormwater runoff to drainage, to supplying water, sewers, anything that has to do with water. Because whenever you build a structure, right, you're kind of building that on ground and ground usually absorbs the water. So when you put like a building like this, you have to consider the water that's not being absorbed by the ground. So you might have to build ponds so that water has a place to run off. Hydrological engineers deal with drainage and the water that comes into your house and water that comes out of your house. Yeah. Now for structural engineering, this is also building bridges, buildings, and other structures like transmission lines, something that I did over the summer. Like those are structures you have to determine loads and the strength of it and how strong you should make it. And also with the building of buildings is a need of designing green infrastructure, infrastructure that is sustainable, that is long lasting, that will be sustainable and just good for the environment because we cannot be living the same way that we are because our resources might go out. So we have to consider sustainability and that is one of the professors teach because they're like, sustainability, that's on you guys. That's what you guys have to design for. So that is our future. And the future of civil engineers is the number one question of how do we make it more sustainable and long lasting? Next up, we have surveying. Surveyors are the ones who kind of map out the land. They're the ones who create coordinate systems and stationing for projects and just a way to decipher where things are gonna be placed and kind of a coordinate system of where things are going to be. They measure elevations and they might do LIDAR. LIDAR is just kind of a scan of the area and like putting these light points in like AutoCAD and like AutoCAD file. So like you kind of know where things are is from like tree lidar to road lidar also something that i want to discuss is the difference between consulting and project management so usually those are like the two types of jobs civil engineers go into so consulting is more doing design work with a software like like autocad microstation or a industry specific software to design roads bridges or drainage systems usually you can use a software like epa net or swim there's so many but usually when you go into consulting firm it'll teach you the skills to use those software so you're most likely doing the designing like creating those design manuals and books project management is after the designs are finished you're out in the field making sure that it's being built correctly you have to have the understanding of how to read the design manuals so you know when the contractors are doing the work right so consulting you're going to be more in a office setting working on a computer while project management you might be more of a field engineer out in the field with the contractors to make sure that they're doing the work correctly and reporting back and documenting their work. Something else civil engineers can go into is the oil and gas field. It is a job field that kind of fluctuates over time. 
So it's still something you can go into because with those types of jobs, working with Shell, Chevron, are just other oil and gas companies, there's always gonna be a need for civil engineers because you might be on a team to build structures or you might be on their geologic team with a geotech background. So there's always gonna be room for civil engineers in the oil and gas field, but it kind of fluctuates in jobs and when they decide to let go people because when the economy is in a downturn, so is the oil and gas industry. But as a civil engineer, there is so many other jobs that you can go into, not just what I said. Usually consulting firms may have land development, to hydraulics, to transportation, traffic, surveying. There's so many things you can go into. And usually once you graduate, you kind of focus into one, become a expert in it because in your college degree, you're kind of learning all of these concentrations across. But once you graduate, you kind of delve deep into one concentration and go from there but you may not even go into any of these concentrations because some other companies just kind of look at if you have an engineering degree. Over the summer, I didn't even know transmission line design was an industry that can go into, but it makes sense because it is structures putting into the ground. And with that, some projects, you're gonna be working with other types of engineers because one project always needs a geotech engineer and then you're working with either hydraulic engineers or structural engineers and it's always a team effort so with that being said hopefully i gave you some background information of what kind of jobs you can go into as a civil engineer and if you have any questions about being a civil engineer I'm not technically a official civil engineer because I'm still in school, being a college senior about to graduate. But if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. Like I'll try to get to them. But with that, that's all I have to say and I will catch you guys later. Bye.